Hello, people of Storyville. How you doing? So, welcome to another episode of the Storyville podcast, and we'll be reading the book Two Fruits and a Lie. Honestly, guys, it's been all shades of horrifying and intense. All right, so let's um look at chapter six today and find out what happens. We're getting to the end almost. Okay. How did this creature know his name? Joe was curious to find out, and what did he mean by "see you again"? He knew that this was his first time to ever be by this lake. Just as the grandfather spoke those words, Tim had pushed Joe behind him, trying to look as tall and big as he could ever be. He sure did not want to lose his brother while trying to find his sister. Who are you? And what do you want? Tim roared at the creature. The grandfather looked at the two boys and then to Makosh. What have you told them, Makosh? The grandfather asked with a very stern look on his face. Nothing, Makosh answered. There was no time. The godfather looked back at the boys. This time he fixed his gaze on Tim, his burning red eyes piercing into Tim's soul, probably searching for fear, but fear was one emotion that both boys were void of. Answer me, Tim roared again. You're in no position to question me, Timothy. The godfather rolled back. And raising his trident high up and striking the water in rage, he said, You are beneath me. And if it wasn't for your mother, you will be dead. The first moment I revealed myself to your mortal eyes. It was obvious that Tim had pissed the godfather off. There were so many waves now rumpling the lakes and there was a cloud gathering just above the head of the grandfather. Take it easy on them, father, Makosh said, speaking for the very first time since the appearance of the godfather. Joe had been quiet since the arrival. He had so much curiosity in him, but still hadn't spoke just yet. On hearing Makosh's words, the grandfather began to calm down. Everything was still and calm again. It's time you found out who you truly are, the both of you. The grandfather started again. But since I already know who you are, why don't I start with an introduction? His voice was still so deep and scary. I am Tico. I am the last and only existing Voldemort on the planet. My kind was wiped away by demons and humans over a thousand years ago. I'm also called the Grandfather or Godfather in most bedtime stories. But you cannot call me that name unless you earn it. Twenty-five years ago, a little girl named Deborah Jefferson saved my race from total extinction by saving my life. I was gliding across the sea and swam into a fisherman's net. It was one of the strongest nets I have ever encountered. It was laced with a fish-catching spell. My trident was not with me and hence I struggled to break free for days until she found me. Strangely, she did not run away but freed me from the net and that was where it all began. This was really intriguing so far, Joe thought, but all these questions were still yet to be answered. The most curious thought was, why did Makosh, a little girl, say she was his mother? Now I know who you are, said Joe finally, but I need to know who I am and most importantly, how I can save Emily. You are my son, Joseph, Makosh said. No, I'm not! Joe interrupted her, screaming at the top of his voice. He had had enough of all the parables and he needed answers now. How can you be my mother? Are you listening to yourself? You are a child. And don't forget that I know who my mother is already. So if the next word that comes out of your mouth is not an explanation of how I could be your son, then I don't want to hear another word from you. There was quietness for a minute as Joe finished speaking. Makosh looked from Joe to Tim and then to Tiko, who gave her an approving nod as their eyes met. 
Makosh spread both her arms out like she wanted to fly. Her eyes were closed and her head was up like she was looking into the sky. She began to levitate off the ground now. Suddenly, there was a huge ball of light that engulfed her. It was so bright that it made it impossible for both boys to see what was happening with her. The light shone for a few more seconds and they began, it began to dim. But when the light was completely gone, Makosh was nowhere to be found. The lady who stood before them was tall and extremely beautiful. She had beautiful blonde hair and bright blue eyes. She had a halo made of red roses that hovered around her head. She had the most beautiful white wings one could ever have imagined. She was smiling at the two boys now and still floating on the air. Jo and Tim looked at her in amazement. She was truly a wonder and there was something so peaceful and joyful about her aura. She spoke now. I am Makarsh, the goddess of love, nature and wisdom. And you, Joseph Carson, are a demigod. You are my son. You were conceived because the demons that roamed the earth finally found the way to get rid of all that is good and pure on earth and cut out the connection between mankind and God. If that happens, it will be the beginning of the end. The creature you know as a prophet is a beda, a cunning shape-shifting demon who brings misfortune, hardship and grief wherever she roams. She was called the prophet because she was once a goddess. She was a messenger goddess for decades. She was the one who delivered messages from the gods to man until she got obsessed with bearing bad news. This obsession drove her to cause grief and misfortune to humans. She was the prophet of doom. She was banned from Nirvana, which is where the deities reside. She turned fully into a dark beast, a beta, roaming the earth and causing death and misfortune. She was more powerful than all other terrestrial creatures on Earth and subdued all of them, including good ones such as Vodanoi. Her only weakness was not being able to f turn fully human. But 20 years ago, she discovered a way to fully possess an infant baby and live a double life on Earth so she can finally get her hands on the VL. It was all starting to make sense, so, so much sense now. All the puzzles were beginning to fit in. Joe knew what the veil was. He had read about it in his study of Slavian myths. It was said to be the cup that the first men, the demons and the deities, first shared drink to mark the balance between all life forms, allowing them to coexist. It is believed that the cup also had the power to break the balance if it fell into the wrong hands. A demon would have to slay a pure human, a deity, and another demon and drink all the blood mixed together from the veil, and it will give them, give the demon power to rule all three planes. Now, now Joe knew why Emily was taken. She was going to be sacrificed, as she is the pure human, and he knew that he had to stop her. She's going to kill Emily, isn't she? Joe asked. He could hear how shaky his voice was. He didn't wait for an answer from either Tico or Makosh. He continued, Tell me where she is. I have to save my little, my little sister. I'm afraid I can't let you leave, Joseph. Tico roared loudly. He waved his trident in the air, and the waves of the water, just like human arms, rose up from the lake and helped Joe and Tim, despite, helped Joe and Tim down despite their struggles. What are you doing? Tim was the first to speak. You don't get it, do you, Joe? Makosh asked. The prophet has a pure human and already has a demon to slay. Right now, all she needs is a deity. Right now, all she needs is you. I'm afraid, for the good of all existing forms, we cannot let you leave. You are safe here, and so long as she doesn't have you, she cannot complete the ritual. Wow. That was some creepy chapter. That's the end of chapter 6.